In this video, we will discuss the Zeeman effect, which describes the splitting of spectral lines under the influence of an external magnetic field. Historically, we distinguished the normal Zeeman effect, where we do not have spin, and the anomalous Zeeman effect, where we do consider spin. The reason why it's called anomalous Zeeman effect is that the concept of spin was discovered more than 20 years after Zeeman did his experiments. At that time, he could not explain the results he was getting, so it was called anomalous. Whether we consider spin or not, the Zeeman effect is based on the interaction of a magnetic moment with an external magnetic field. In particular, the potential energy of this magnetic moment is given by the negative vector dot product of magnetic moment and magnetic field. This magnetic moment can be written in terms of a g vector, a magneton, and an angular momentum. This magneton depends on the charge and the mass for the specific particle. In case of an electron, this is the Bohr magneton. If we now, for example, consider orbital angular momentum and spin, the magnetic moment would look like this. Moreover, if we consider a specific particle like the electron, we can use electron-specific values for GL and GS, as well as the Bohr magneton. What all of this tells us is that the energy levels of an electron, for instance inside a hydrogen atom, change under the influence of an external magnetic field. Now that we have set up all necessary equations, let's talk about the Zeeman effect for an external B field in the z direction. First, the normal Zeeman effect. Here we only consider orbital angular momentum. An example could be an electron in a spin singlet state, such that its spin quantum number is zero. If we calculate the energy shift due to a magnetic field, not forgetting about the electron's negative charge, we get to the result mu b times ml times bz. Since different values of ml are integer steps apart, the line splits in equally distant lines. For an electron with L equals 1, we get three lines. Also, if we increase the magnetic field, the lines will move further and further apart. Next, the anomalous Zeeman effect. Now we have orbital angular momentum as well as spin, which together couple to a total spin j. By doing the same calculations as before, we get the result that the energy shift is given by E over 2m times Lz plus GSSZ times the magnetic field. Here we notice that the magnetic moment is no longer parallel to the total spin J, since GS is approximately 2. However, Lz and SZ are anyway meaningless when we are dealing with a total spin J. So we have to rewrite it somehow. After some steps, which are out of the scope of this video, we can write this also as mu b gj times bz, where this gj is a special case of a g factor called the Lande g factor. This is not a constant, rather it depends on l, s and j. Therefore, the line splitting is not equally separated as with the normal Zeeman effect. For example, for electrons in the p1 half and p3 half states, the lines will split like this, where the splitting for the p1 half state is larger than for the p3 half state. Again, the reason for this is that the Lande g factor is different for the p1 half and the p3 half states. Finally, let us talk about the Paschenbach effect. This is a special case of the anomalous Zeeman effect, where the magnetic field gets so strong that L and S decouple again and interact independently with the magnetic field. Therefore, we can use the result that we dismissed earlier, containing Lz and Sz. After replacing the operators with their eigenvalues, we get mu b times ml plus gsms times the magnetic field. Note here that since gs is approximately 2, even though spin takes on half integer values, it looks like an integer contribution. To illustrate this, let's take the p1 half and p3 half states again. The letter p tells us that they are in fact l equals 1 states. After doing some calculations, we get 5 new energy levels, corresponding to those values of ml, ms and ml plus 2 ms. Since those lines have equal distances from each other, it looks like as 
if by increasing the magnetic field strength, we can go from the anomalous Zeeman effect to a normal Zeeman effect. But that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching.